Hello, my little fruit pastilles. How are you all doing? Welcome to another glorious video set in the game of uh, Fallout 4. And I'm playing it on the PlayStation 4. 5, actually. PlayStation 5. I chose a bad time to make a video. It's night time and it's pissing with rain. But I've been doing a spot of building here at Hangman's Alley. I've got mods active, including settlements extended, which massively increases the build area. Not just in width, but in height. So, whereas in a vanilla game, you couldn't build outside of the alley itself. Now you can build right over to the... into the river, in fact. It's not just the water's edge, but beyond that. So you could have water purifiers in the river. And if you wanted, you could rip up all these railings and these trees can even tidy up the leaf litter and rubbish on the streets. You might think it's your civic duty and, and get, to, get rid of these nasty bollards. And what's the point of um, bus stops? There are no buses. There haven't been buses running for 200 years. Anyway, in this playthrough, I'm going for a sort of Art Deco-y Ghostbusters technology theme. If you think of films like Frankenstein and such like which were made in the 1930s. A fascination with technology, electricity and the architectural styles were very clean and lots of white. But art Deco, clean forms and clean styles. So this is my attempt at a, an Art Deco building. In the style of that which was in the Ghostbusters film. The architect of that building was an Evo Shandor. The real building, I don't know about who the architect was, but the real building in New York is located at 55 Central Park West, overlooking Central Park. That's in the film. And on the roof of that building there was a temple of Gozer. Also, the destroyer, Goza, the traveler, Volga Sindrada. And um, Dana Barrett, who lived in that building, had a, a penthouse apartment in the corner on the 22nd floor. You see the Ghostbusters climbing the stairways. I don't know why they didn't take the lift. In this, in this game, I have lifts in the building, but I'm actually getting problems with them, which you'll see when we get inside. So you can see how I've. demolished the existing building, deleted it, and put in my structure. Shandar Gozerian Mansions. And here we are in the alley itself. So the build area in the vanilla game is about to about here. You can't really go beyond that, which is why 
settlements extended is a must for any serious building work. Dinner Barrett's apartment block. Dinner Barrett's the Sigourney Weaver character. It's quite a, a big building for New York. It's at least 30 floors. Nearer 33 or 34 floors if you include the elaborate Goza temple on the roof. This rain gonna stop, huh? I should have had some of these weather altering fireworks. I would have set them off. Of course there are hellhounds. And these and this is the closest facsimile you can have for those in in Fallout 4. These mute hounds, mutant hounds, and of course, um, both Sigourney Weaver as Dana Barrett and Rick Moranis. I can't remember the name of his character. Were transformed into these doggy creatures. These hellhounds, in order to become their aspects as keymaster and gatekeeper. I think Rick Moranis was the was he the gatekeeper, and he was looking for the keymaster. Dana Barrett's Sigourney Weaver character was. Was the other one, whichever, whichever I can never, I can't quite remember. So the dog's called Zul. After the minion of Goza. Zul. I'm going to have a little cafe here, eventually. flat here, small apartment, got furnishing on this floor to do, made a start, but it needs all sorts of things, carpeting and so on. But this room is not, not too bad, it's functional. This entire building was inspired by by the Ghostbusters film and other films with that kind of Art Deco 1920s, 30s look. The architectural style of the day. Many of the windows, of course, are boarded up. Because we are 200 years into an apocalyptic era, post-apocalyptic era. If you're wondering what that is up there, that's the... Which is for the lift, the elevator. Don't know what the hell they're doing up there. So I might actually have to get rid of the lifts because it keeps doing that. It's the second time it's done that. So this 
This is what is going to be my equivalent of Dana Barrett's apartment. Though her apartment in in the Ghostbuster building was was in the um, the front the front of the building on the front mm, well this side uh, the right hand side if you're looking at the building or left hand side if you're inside the building looking out so it would have been on this corner. But as this building is only a fraction of the size, I might have her, the whole apartment extending across this side, so it can be both back and front of the building. And uh, I'll eventually furnish it to look as close to Dana Barrett's flat. Uh, it was a penthouse apartment. There's a scene where she's standing, where she's approaching the windows, and the windows blow out. And there's a strip of a strip of garden. Well, it's actually a, a small balcony. So you see her approaching. You see her through the windows approaching. Then the windows blow out and that um, exposes the, the secret or concealed stairway up to the roof I've got myself stuck here <laughs> Best time. Probably not the best time to be filming this. Night time. But I thought you might like a progress report on my building work. This is one of the balconies that was on the building there. And I've had to demolish quite a lot of the building to fit my new building in. Just as if I had to dismantle quite a lot of this building, particularly the upper portion, in order to fit my building in, in its footprint. So let's go inside, shall we? I've blocked the front door, so you can't use the front door. I found that people were rather annoyingly opening all the doors, which they do. So I've barricaded it. Which is fairly realistic in as much as when it when ra there are raiders quite nearby there's just there's some in the that ship across the, the river there on that barge that's being towed there's one that's crashed into the bridge but you can hear gunfire over there some more 
readers. So having a big welcoming front door and entrance into the building is not a good idea. So I've blocked it off. So now you have to run the gauntlet of my security measures. As, uh, in as much as I've done any so far. These gun turrets. Well, this is one of the, the bay windows from the building. Because <laughs> with scrap that settlement and scrap that commonwealth, you can do things like take things apart and reuse them. Because this one was up there somewhere. And this one was up there somewhere. I, it was above that one. A bit like those. Well, I managed to reinstate this one lower down. In a position which is more in keeping with my, my architecture. There are only two settlers here at the moment, and Piper's not one of them. Or three, if you include the dog. The mutant hound. Or residential. So this lift is okay, you know, it's, it seems to be Intact. My generator. Some settler bedding. Settlers don't like going upstairs, so you need to have as many convenient beds downstairs where they, they can access them. Some storage under the stairs. Harry Potter's room. Locked off some of these doors and so on, just to save the the game really, because the game struggles to to load all these these things if you if you as intensely furnish as I do. frame rate and so on can drop or it can even crash the game if you've just got too many objects and assets for the game to continually load in. The elevator. So this one still works. Well they both work, it's just that the, the upper section they can't access now because of the the way the buttons have migrated into the sky. So I might have to rip out the elevator column. I haven't blocked this one off. But that's it's not really a, a usable room, it's more of a broom cupboard. Where you can keep your cleaning equipment, vacuum cleaner and such like, a mop and bucket. So this stairway used to be blocked off. so the raiders couldn't have used it to access it. That's when I had the, the front door open when I was installing the elevators. And here we are. The rooftop apartments. Well, the frontage of 
for building. A massive amount of furnishing is still required, but then the building needs a massive amount of work to complete it, to take it to roof level and to create my facsimile of the Temple of Goza. Ooh, it's getting light, which is nice, a nice morning. And you can see the elevator buttons way up there. Completely useless. I managed to reintegrate this pretty bit of roof that I took off. I quite like that. Looks quite nice there. And that's the carpet glitch. You see the bits of carpet that, that I've used to maneuver the the fancy deco railing and that obelisk into position. So most of the building is going to be closed off. Again to save on furnishings that might otherwise crash the game or cause issues with frame rate and so on. So the bulk of the building will be empty. And I'll only furnish, fully furnish those rooms and places that are important or, or visible. elevator in as much as it will it works. So that brings it up to the fourth floor. You see this still works, it's still got the buttons in the, the correct position. And I can bring this this elevator down. This second elevator. But now I can't go up because what the Hell's happened to the, the buttons? You know the, <laughs> the buttons are up there. Completely useless. So I might have to just rip them all out and just put in the stairwell. Which might actually be a good thing. Because the elevator does use up quite a lot of space, given that there's two elevator columns staggered. So one one elevator rises four floors, then you change to the other elevator on the fourth floor, which again rises four floors. But while this is not working, I don't have access to the upper part of the building. But rather conveniently, I've got a jetpack. Where have they gone now? Buttons. Oh, they're here! <laughs> well, yeah, well, I never. They do get around, don't they? <laughs> that is just ridiculous. Why is it doing that? Yep, that's got to go. Just pain in the ass. So, I think to resolve that, I'm going to have to rip out the elevators, put in a stairwell. But it'll be like the stairwell. The one that corkscrews up the 
the building in the Ghostbuster building in Ghostbusters. Where you see the, the Ghostbusters climbing the stairs. Nice window box. Sort of balcony, window box. Great views from this apartment. Well, I'm wondering whether to actually have these these uh, apartments usable. You can have them in a semi-derelict looking state. Yeah, what, what was Rick Moranis' character's name? I can't remember. But he had his his apartment in the same corridor as Dana Barrett's, just a couple of doors along. But this building is quite simply not big enough for that. Though that said, if I remove the, the elevator, that frees up a bit of space. Or I could put in a corridor. But anyway, if you like what I'm doing here, if you think it's interesting, even possibly inspiring, give me a, a like, a thumbs up the video, and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, more of my the stuff I do, my buildings and structures. And of course, if you want to see how this develops, Because there's still so much to do. I'm a long way from completing it. But even the, the frontage here may look complete, but I'm going to put some CVA rubbish all over it to, again, soften it into the environment, to blend it in so it looks more like it belongs rather than some player construction. Ghostbusters inspired tower block, quite a modest structure really, less than a, a third of the size of the building from the film, but um, heavily influenced by it, to the extent that I'm going to build a temple of Gozer on the roof, and I've got a pet Zool wandering around guarding it. So, but you can't get another mutant hound to have a, as a, a pet, because that could be both Rick Moranis' and Sigourney Weaver's doggy, <laughs> doggy selves patrolling. Mm, but thanks for watching this, for staying this long, and like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And there will be more. And stay tuned for our progress reports and eventually the complete building. Fully decorated, fully furnished. Complete. So thanks again and ta ta for now. From Hangman's Alley and Fallout 4. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.